So uh, today's presentation is uh, a, a variation of a theme and a message that uh, Online Model United Nations has shared uh, at past global ed conferences. Uh, it, I'm struck by the fact that two years ago we were really a small program in search of participants and uh, now, three years later, two and a half years later, uh, we really have become a very special student-driven global movement. Um, I am the founder of OMUN. I'm originally a teacher. I live here uh, in Amman, Jordan, and uh, have taught a few other places in my life. I'm originally from California. Um, and I'll let Omar briefly introduce himself because uh, he's going to uh, cover a few of today's uh, uh, part of today's presentation. Go ahead, Omar. Sorry. All right. Thank you, Ms. Martin. All right, my name is Omar. I go to school in Cairo, Egypt. It's called Hayat International Academy. I'm currently a junior, so I'm in 11th grade. And I have had a lot of OMEN debate experience, more than 20 debates, moderator and delegate. My MUN experience, I've been to local conferences like Hayat, MUN, AIS, CAC. And I've also been to international conferences, for example, the Turkish International and soon to be Simon Kotar. And my hobbies are quite diverse. I like and enjoy participating and have spoken in TEDx. I enjoy creative writing and obviously I like ME1. So you'll be hearing from me soon enough, but I'll let Ms. Martin continue. Great. Thank you, Omar. Um, again, uh, my name is Lisa Martin, so we have it for the record. Um, and uh, I wanted just to uh, kind of explain one acronym that, that gets used a lot that I think is really important to define this particular program. Um, people who are watching this or who are, are listening right now know that uh, Model United Nations is an academic simulation. It's actually the biggest academic simulation in the world, uh, very popular in high schools, both uh, in the United States and outside the United States. Uh, it's a very, very active university MUN scene and increasingly a middle school MUN scene. Um, and there are different variations of Model UN. The one that we follow is called Simon or the Hague International Model United Nations. Uh, for the uninitiated, it's a little bit different than the, the MUN that's practiced in the States, which is often uh, organized by university students for high school students. But in the case of Simon, uh, all debates, uh, sessions, and activities are organized by high school students for high school students. And for middle school students, uh, conferences are actually run entirely by high school students um, for their younger counterparts. So one of the things that makes this program unique is that when we're talking about global, global youth, we really are talking about uh, high school students who have driven this uh, program forward. Uh, I came up with this idea almost by accident in a one-year teaching stint that I did at an online high school. And um, But it has really been myself and about 50 or 60 really dedicated high school students over the course of the past two and a half years that have really developed this program. There's very little um, way in terms of institutional support or other teachers that have actively driven this forward. This is very much a, a student, a high school driven um, driven program. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over to Omar, who can briefly go over uh, what we call the OMUN universe. And that is uh, for this global program. And our estimates right now is that we have had students probably from close to 60 countries participating in this. Um, but there, there are various parts of this program, and that is how people find us, and that is how we kind of engage with the rest of the world. So he's going to go over a bit of that. Uh, but really, the focus of today's presentation is to let a few of our participants uh, share their uh, kind of how they came to find uh, this this organization and what it means to them and what it means to be uh, part of building uh, a global organization of this nature. So Omar, I'm going to turn it over to you for the next several slides. I thank you, Ms. Martin. But before I begin, I'd like to share like a quick story of how I met Omen. And so my first words to Ms. Martin were the following. Hello, I'm Omar, and I'm from Egypt. Now, how often is it that you introduce yourself by exclaiming the country you're from? 
Well, here at Omen, it's pretty frequent. Being in a room with delegates from all over the world, it's just exhilarating. But being in a virtual room with delegates from all over the world, the feeling, it's, it's indescribable. It just makes you enjoy the idea of Omen itself and how extraordinary it is. You could be sitting on your bed, on your couch, on your desk, debating unique topics every single week. Talking with people from the UAE, Egypt, Jordan, USA, Taiwan, China, and lots, lots more. OMEN isn't just some MUN program, it's a passion. Active delegates will always thank the creation of MUN, but most definitely towards the creation of OMEN. So, I'd like to begin by introducing the OMEN universe. First of all, the website, the OMEN website, it features all of the debates uh, that we have throughout the weeks. It could have a global debate, the Americas, Europe, Asia, Middle East, and Africa, and more like ICJ and Security Council, and even has a university level of debate. And then other than the debates and the registration, it also has, uh, it also has UN resources or student resources. So these are to get delegates oriented in the online debates program. You could start by getting oriented. You could see the technology, troubleshoot. You could see how to become a student officer, OMEN, and a lot more. And so then we have the Facebook groups, which is our main way of reaching the students throughout the world. We have, we have uh, specific regions, for example, the Middle East and Africa. We have, um, the, we have about 300 students on that group. And so each region has a group, and then we have a main Omen, Simon Omen group. And so that is really interesting. So moving on, the virtual conference room is where lobbying, debate, and other meetings are held. We give in the links prior to the debate time, and we use actually Blackberry, Blackboard Collaborate, just like the one we're in now. For example, we use that ABC function under your name to vote. A is usually for, B against, and C for abstentions. And then we use the raising hand to raise the placard and basically signal to the chair that you want to speak and give out your speech. And then we use the, the emotions to ensure that all delegates and, uh, can hear the speaker and all delegates can see, for example, a resolution that is on the page. In addition, uh, we have the uh, we have the global and regional debates. These are five plus debates each month. The regions are split up into the following. You have global debate, which is for all of the regions, Americas and Europe, that is one region, Asia regional debate, the Middle East and Africa regional debate, Security Council, which isn't a regional debate, but it is a debate and the Pacific debate, which we have newly uh, recognized. And so we have these debates to ensure that the debates are made of convenient times for the regional participation, basically to endorse all different regions to actively improve their speech skills and MUN skills. Moving on, we have the national programs. Now, the national programs have been launched. We've launched several national level OMEN programs in 2013. They run autonomously under the auspices of a school, and it's for the benefit of all students in that country. We have different programs, such as the Egypt National Program, France, Singapore, Taiwan, Turkey, Palestine, and coming soon, Qatar. And so a school basically hosts a national program, and then all of the country's uh, delegates or, or willing delegates join this respective national program, and the hosting school changes from every two years, I believe it is. And, uh, we have Mighty Bell. Mighty Bell is a private research site curated by us students. And so we use it basically to share the research links, comment on it, ensure that all delegates know what the topic is. It's basically for assistance. So for example, let's say you signed up for a debate on the sovereignty of Palestinian people over natural resources. 
you'll be invited by email. Uh, you'll be invited to join the Mighty Bell site. And then once you accept this invitation, then you're linked to a page similar to the one on the on the page or on the board right now. Uh, you'll see different research links posted by the moderators, which are vol volunteering students from the moderators group. And you can comment on the side if you have any questions, moderators will answer, et cetera, et cetera. Finally, we have the delegate recognition system. Now, this is really important because it gives a motivation for students to actually actively participate in Simon Omen. It documents your participation via digital badges. And so you earn badges based on your level of engagement, points awarded based on active participation. For example, if you join a debate, you will gain one, uh, one point. And if you speak and give a speech, then you'll get for example, three points if you submit an amendment or a change to the resolution at hand, then you'll receive even more points. Uh, Ms. Martin has linked the site to the delegate recognition system if you want to check it out. And so badges can be shared across social media platforms and can be linked and embedded into applications and e-portfolios just in case you want to prove that you're actively participating in OMEN. For example, I know IB students have CAS, Creativity Action Service. They can use that as CAS evidence. And, and the benefit of having it digitally is that they'll never expire. Uh, badges are also awarded for leadership, blogging, and other special tasks and events. And so basically we credit, you get what you earn. We credit every single action. Badging for traditional conferences coming in 2014. And so we use this working with Achievery and Coterie in Rhode Island, USA. And so that is Delegate Recognition System. I'll now hand it over to Ms. Martin again. She could proceed with the following. Thanks. Yeah, and I also just want to speak really quickly about the badging. Um, situation here. This is something we've been envisioning for the past two years and it's really something we've only just started in the last couple of weeks. Um, and or we are working really closely with this group in the United States. And the reason this is really important I feel um, is because a lot of students are coming from school school environments that have never done anyone. Um, and so they they have a difficult time explaining some of the skills that they're that they're learning, whether they be technology related skills, leadership skills, um, or or just some of the skills related to anyone itself, whether it be you know research, public speaking, or what have you. Um, and so this is an opportunity uh, for these students to be able to document uh, back to some kind of verifiable truth uh, or proof um, as to their participation. So uh, Coterie is very excited because uh, we're one of the first really student-driven global organizations to, um, to, to look at badging, and it'll be really interesting to see over the next couple of years um, how different students in different parts of the world are, are using these badges and, and what they feel the value is. Um, the last quick thing before we just tell you a, a bit about some of the, the students who are involved in this is that we also have a very active student blog that we post to one to two times a week. Um, again, different students who have never been involved in Model UN or who have never been involved in any kind of global ed project uh, usually have some very keen insights as to what this kind of collaboration means. You know, as teachers, we talk about the need for collaboration in global ed. We talk about it a lot, um, but I think even more valuable is to actually hear what it means for uh, a student in Nigeria or a kid in Swaziland or a homeschooled student someplace in the United States uh, to, to get their impressions and feedback on what it means to be part of a larger global uh, organization and one that, that they pretty much are working together on to, uh, to develop. So if you're ever interested in getting a sense of what OMUN is about, yeah, you know, there's the technology and there, there's, you know, interesting how-to uh, descriptions on our website, but it's really the blog, I think, that gets to the heart of what it is we're trying to do. Um, and speaking of getting to the heart, 
I just want to share a couple of stories just to show you how this program has really expanded. And all of these places, who did that? My slide. Um, all of these stories really have taken place just in the last uh, three months. So uh, every morning when I check my email, there's almost always some kind of surprise or some kind of uh, notice or, or email from a students someplace in the world. And, and here are a few of them. Uh, this group of students here are logging in from a food court in Dili, Timor. And they are uh, the first students uh, to actively do MUN uh, in East Timor. They have an active peace group that they all belong to. And they found us online and were very interested in participating. So we're going to be working with them over the next several months. Um, they're their school schedule is a bit different than, than ours, but we're, we're working to find some time so that they can become involved in uh, this community. Um, this is Maher from Gaza, um, uh, very interested in MUN and has no ability to travel outside of Gaza. Uh, so OMUN is kind of his connection to a larger debating community. He's made a number of friends and uh, is someone we'd all like to meet someday. Uh, you can, the picture there is he was Skyping me into uh, a group of students he was doing an OMUN presentation. And uh, so we were using Skype to be able to communicate. Uh, this group of students uh, is actually from Arusha. And they go to a school called St. Jude. And uh, I had a chance to visit there last year. And these are some of our first students uh, in Tanzania. And the idea is, and maybe this is something Elizabeth can talk a little bit about, um, the idea is that people like Elizabeth, who are student officers for OMUN, will actually be mentoring other students. So I kind of made this initial connection, but it will be other students from her school that will reach out and mentor other uh, Tanzanian students in kind of the ways of Model United Nations. Um, and this happened literally just 47 hours ago. Um, this is a group of our students from uh, that are at a, a big Simon conference, again, the Hague International Body United Nations Conference. They hold an annual conference the end of November in Singapore. And a group of these students decided that they wanted to get together. They had been working together online and sitting there at that at that table are students from three different countries that none of them had ever met before. And uh, so they all had dinner together, which I think leads to another uh, interesting consideration uh, that you know, a lot of times we're so concerned about youth, you know, being on the computers and having very one-dimensional lives. But uh, for students that are actively engaged in communities, their face-to-face -face peer interactions in terms of their, their community of friends is actually a little bit bigger because, um, you know, we get very concerned hearing about millennials and digital natives just being consumed all their time on their computers. But um, actually, it's a, it's a way of facilitating friendships and community, which then often spill over into the real world, um, including eating donuts and chicken rice at a food court in Singapore. Um, a couple of the students who are here today, or one, I think, in particular, we couldn't find Ubud, um, is another example of how working together over a period of a couple of years actually led us to all be in the same place at one time. Uh, the Qatar Leadership Conference is an MUN conference that uh, is held the end of September. It is an outstanding event, just an incredible event uh, with students from all over the region and even as far away as, as Taiwan and Singapore. And uh, I want to tell you the story of these three women that you're seeing. Actually, Salam on the left there in the upper left-hand corner, she's going to tell you a bit about her own story. Uh, Mariam uh, is our current Secretary General, and Ubad uh, was a delegate and now an assistant director, uh, and she is from Somalia. Just to explain the leadership uh, structure of this organization, and maybe someone could grab um, the, the leadership link off the webpage, guys, if someone wants to put it in chat. Uh, we currently have a leadership team of students from about 30 countries, but students who graduate uh, from OMUN and they, they you know, graduate from high school, uh, many of them stick around and we end up 
having them run a part of the program. So all the different parts of the program as we have grown, even though this is really now my full-time job, uh, would not have been possible without the help of people like Salam and Ubad, for example. Uh, both of them live in the Middle East Africa region, so whenever we are having activities or debates, they are the ones that are now um, overseeing this and working with the high school students. So again, very much in keeping that this is a, a a youth-driven organization and that leadership is grown and supported uh, throughout the leadership uh, team. So anyway, we're all in Doha. We all had a chance to meet. And there you see uh, Salam, Miriam, and Ubad meeting over breakfast for the first time, like literally for the first time face-to-face. -face. Uh, and there we are posing for a picture. And I don't know if my smile can be any larger, but it was just a fantastic three days. And whenever I have an opportunity to meet students that I've worked with for, for a couple years now, um, it is uh, an incredibly special experience. And we all had a ball. Uh, Ubat's not here, unfortunately. So I'm just going to briefly tell you her story. Um, the last couple years, I've shared this story um, at the, the QLC, or not the QLC, at the Global EdCon. And, um, Upa found us via Facebook and emailed me, messaged me, and said, I, I've heard about this on UN, but we don't have anyone in Somalia. Can I participate? And we let her do that uh, as a delegate, even though um, she was in university. And I said, we'll have you participate, but promise me, if you like it, will you stick around and help us and maybe uh, share it with some other students in Somalia? Uh, that has been a harder process, but she has become an absolute integral part of uh, the leadership community. And um, I, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but when we were at the QLC and had an opportunity to, to shoot some video for a, a small video we're, we're putting together, and she spoke very eloquently about, for the first time, she feels totally connected with uh, a much larger uh, organization, something that she never could have imagined that she would have been a part of. Uh, her trip was actually paid for to go to the QLC where she got to, um, you know, see, see students and, and just be a part of a really important leadership uh, experience. So I think that, you know, for every student that we have from a, a school with a strong MUN program that is looking for additional ways to debate and, and you know, look at these international issues, there are a hundred people like Ubat who just have never had the opportunity. And if anything has convinced me that this is more than just a debating program, it really is to see how this program has impacted her life. Um, and I, I think Salam will be able to speak to that as well. I'm going to introduce Salam, um, and she's going to tell you a bit of her story. Um, Salam is from Israel and uh, has, again, been a delegate. You can see there on the right, she was... Uh, she, uh, went with us to The Hague, the first time an online team had prepped for a major conference. And um, most recently, she was a presenter at the same Qatar Leadership Conference. And uh, so I'm going to turn it over to her. And you can, uh, you know, listen and, and she'll share a little bit about what this kind of youth-driven organization has oh, meant Thank to you, Ms. Morgan. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Salam Kedan. I'm 18 years old. And I'm a Palestinian Arab Israeli citizen. Um, for me, I, sorry. Um, for me, Omen is not um, just any MUN program. Um, Omen is a great community. I joined Omen after about two years of joining the MUN club at my school, and I can say that it's totally different. Um, when I was at my school's club, MUN was all about going to conferences and getting awards. But when I joined Omen, I learned the beauty and reality of MUN. Um, by getting the chance to debate and meet students from all around the world, it showed me the importance of such program. Um, like to see how students are willing to donate their free time to debate and discuss the world issues online with other students, I started looking at the MUN program as a chance for me to make my voice heard. And I started debating, not waiting for something in return, and I really enjoyed it. Um, Almond gave me hope that I can make a difference. It changed my life and my goals. Uh, my goal now is to promote peace and solve the conflict that I'm living in. Um, something I never thought I could even think about before joining Almond. I started meeting um, people from all around the world who were wondering about my situation as an Israeli citizen. Uh, and it feels so good to share. Um, 
I'm going to talk about my first great experience and like slash adventure in my entire life was going to Simon in The Hague with the online team. Um, again, something that I would never even heard about if it wasn't for Omen. Um, it was the first time for me meeting um, students from different countries, and it was so great to talk and share stories with them. And I learned a lot of new things. Um, then, of course, going to the Qatar Leadership Conference to share my story about being an Israeli um, citizen, an Arab Israeli citizen, uh, with people from all around the world. Only by sharing my story, I already feel like somehow I'm making a difference. And because a lot of people didn't know that we even existed, and to change their view and perspectives, huge for me. And for this, and for many other opportunities that Omen gave me, um, it means the world to me, and I'm really glad that I got the chance to be a part of such program. And yeah, thanks. You know, I, I, I'm. And I'm not, I don't want to put words in uh, Salam's mouth, and I'm, I'm sure, especially if you're an educator, uh, you know, we talk all the time about how we want, um, we want education to be transformative in so, in so many ways. And sometimes that's very, very hard to do within the confines of a classroom, but I know good teachers try every single day to make whatever their students are learning, you know, change them as a person. Uh, and I'm just going to tell one little, one little tale on Salam. You know, the first time I met her was in the hallway of a hotel in The Hague, right before, the day before the MUN conference started. She was very shy, um, very quiet. She's still very uh, shy and, and quiet. Um, but by the time I saw her, you know, a year, almost a year later um, in Doha, just here a couple months ago, you know, she told me, she said, you yeah, know, it was, you know, the, the conference was great, but, you know, it's just like people didn't talk with each other so much. And I said, whoa, stop right there. I said, you're the one that's changed. I said, you have just blossomed and come out of your shell and uh, feeling comfortable in your own skin. That's hard for all of us, really. Um, but I think Salam's story illustrates that when you can connect with people and the internet can be the great equalizer between all of us uh, and find a place to meet and do something collaboratively, it really does change people's lives. Um, the other really great story is that of Miriam, and Miriam can't be here because she is at an MUN conference in Bahrain. Uh, you'll see the picture there on your left. Uh, this is a really great uh, story. Uh, Miriam's father is a diplomat in Saudi Arabia. Her, her mother is British. Uh, she goes to school in Bahrain, just right across the causeway. So she's an international commuter. We like to tease her, but uh, she's really just like 30 minutes away from her school. Um, and uh, the day she was appointed secretary general, which is the highest position uh, that a high school student can attain in our organization, her family uh, made big signs and welcomed her when she came home from school. And the picture you see on the right is uh, part of the, the videotaping that we were doing when we were at the, the QLC for kind of a little documentary that we're doing. Um, but again, she epitomizes something that's very special about ONUN, that you know, when we think of girls from Saudi Arabia, we have some very immediate uh, you know, stereotypes, but there, there are also some very real constraints on, say, girls being able to participate in regional MUN conferences in terms of leaving the country. Um, even if their parents support it, sometimes they... Uh, end up at the airport and, and they're, they're not let out even though their, their fathers are there saying, no, no, they're on a, they're on a school team. So it's just it's a whole gamut of complications that I think a lot of us never really have to deal with. And Miriam, who kind of has her feet in both worlds, is very, very um, aware. And I, I am hoping in two years' time that she will be leading a presentation on starting an all-girls debating the society that we're going to be starting next year within OMUN so that we can take this program to girls who would otherwise not have an opportunity to participate, train them and provide them with leadership opportunities online in this forum, and then they can take that back to their classrooms and their clubs and to other schools and uh, create uh, something uh, for those students as well. So this is something she feels very passionate about. Uh, she's an incredible debater and a very articulate spokesperson for all of you. I'm sorry she can't be here uh, today to share that. 
Um, this next great picture, Carrie, I hope you don't mind. I love this picture. This was one of the first pictures I got from Carrie. Carrie is our new community development officer. Um, I'm going to turn the mic over to her and let her share a little bit of her story. But I think you can see that the, the diversity of these students is really all over the place. And each one of them come to this organization uh, I don't know, maybe for the same reason or different reason, but, but they get different things out of it depending on where they are literally in the world or where they are in their own lives. So I'm going to turn it over to Carrie, and she can explain a bit of uh, her interactions with online model United Nations. Hello, everyone. My name is Carrie Antistabrow, and I have actually just joined OMEN three months ago. Now, we have to go back in order to understand my full OMEN story. My first OMUN, I mean MUN conference was with my school in Dubai. I've lived in the Middle East in Saudi Arabia, and I didn't really get into o um, MUN until ninth grade. And I went with my school, and I loved it. I had a passion for it. I, I loved everything about debating. I loved everyone, yes, the newbie. I loved everyone who came. I just loved learning about things that affected our world today. Now, due to my father's job, I move a lot. I move around a lot, and it's hard for me to stick with one school, so I went back online to school, and it took me a long time, and I was wondering, how could I get back into MUN again? I want to get back into MUN so bad. It is one of, it is my passion. I want to get back into it, and it wasn't until my dear friend, Fatma, dear friend, who told me about it, and she's like, you should, you should sign up. You should email, and at first, I was very hesitant. So I'm like, are they going to accept me? Is it going to turn out well? Am I going to succeed? But I had the courage to press that send button, and I'm so glad I did. That was three months ago. Um, I've learned so much through this. I've become the community development officer, and I can't believe how far I've come. Really, OMUN isn't just about debating. Um, it is so hard to describe. OMUN is about building communities to places everywhere around the world, you always feel, no matter where you are, no matter where you live, you will always have a group supporting you. And that's really what OMUN is about, and that's what I've learned. I've learned how to debate. I've learned how to speak more eloquently. I've created so many friends, and I can actually go to conferences due to OMUN. I'm going to theme in Qatar this year. It has opened so many doors. It is an amazing program. And I can't wait to grow into it. I've only been here for three months, but I believe I'll be here for a very long time. Um, yes, I'm so excited to meet Miss Lisa face to face. Anyways, I will turn the mic back. I thank you all for hearing me and hearing my story. It truly is an amazing experience. I probably have described it so blotchy right now, but that's really how I feel. So thank you all for listening, and I'll hand the mic back. Um, I want to Oh, sorry. We um, we have uh, all our leadership opportunities come out in the uh, in the spring. You know, we have applications, and you know, just like a traditional MUN program. Um, and community development was actually uh, a position we did not fill because we really needed a special personality, someone who uh, a is online a lot who has a really strong and very positive online presence. Uh, Carrie's helping us organize an online party here at the beginning of the year. So, um, you know, positive online presence is very hard to convey, and that's one thing that students in our program learn is that when they kind of become missing in action, they really uh, they, they really do disappear and leave a big hole in our program. And so we, we waited for the perfect person, and that perfect person happened to be really new to OLMUN. And so we're really thrilled to have Carrie involved. Um, at the QLC, related to the same theme, um, the president of of the OMUN Board of Directors, and we do have a Board of Directors. We became an official nonprofit uh, just a couple of months ago. Uh, and the, the current president of the OMUN Board is actually a former student of mine and uh, is a vice president of a big business in the United Arab Emirates. He's a Palestinian-American and a wonderful, wonderful man and has supported us a lot. But uh, he is heavily involved in media, media mergers and acquisitions. And he came to the QLC, he met Salam and Ubad and Maryam and uh, really got to, to talk with them. And 
what I thought what he had to, to share with us was really telling, and this gets back to what Carrie was talking about. He said, what I am seeing with this program is that, it, A, first of all, it's not a technology program by any stretch of the imagination. It's very much an educational program. Uh, he said, but this is the, the kind of environment that companies nowadays cannot figure out. And I would also argue that schools cannot figure this generation out, right, the millennials and the, the digital natives. Because he said this is not MUN that's done online. He says this is a social network through which MUN is being delivered. And he said so the social network, this has become their social network. This has become their MUN network. Um, and this is something that, that companies and I think schools, like I said, have a hard time figuring out. And millennials are very quick to identify authentic community. And so I think one of the challenges in creating global projects is, are they authentic to students? And I think sometimes we as adults uh, set them up and try and think they're authentic and they end up not being authentic. Um, so when Carrie says that, you know, she literally is in touch all the time, like all day with students in this network, it is because this is where these students are. They are online, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, whatever messaging, you know, Tumblr. We just started Tumblr. We all had to get into Tumblr because there are kids on Tumblr. So, okay, we need to be on Tumblr. Um, but this is where they are, and, and hence the program is being driven through you know, where the students are actually located, and uh, and I think that is what makes this truly a, a, a unique program, and I, and Carrie's a great example of that. Um, now, Elizabeth has a language to your waiting um, at the end. Um, Elizabeth is also a student that uh, is going to be coming to uh, the Big MUN conference here in the Middle East in a couple of months, so I'm going to get to meet her face-to-face. -face. She is from Dar es Salaam, and uh, I'm going to let you share, let her share her story. Um, and tell you how she got involved in OMUN as well. Hi, uh, thank you, Ms. Martin. Uh, my name is Elizabeth. I hope you can hear me. I don't have very good, sufficient internet. Uh, my MUN, com uh, sorry, I've, I've been doing MUN for a couple of years now, uh, about two years, and it's, it has been really exciting, but seeing as it's Dar es Salaam, there aren't so many MUN conferences here. And it's it's either extremely expensive, but it's really far away to uh, to go um, traveling and whatnot. So when I found OMUN, I was in shock. It was just it was just happiness right there. I'm like, oh my god, I could do this at home. I don't need to dress up because I don't own any fancy you know office clothes. All I had to do is just sit there in my pajamas. And it has been extreme an extremely exciting experience because I could meet lots of people. A, a lots of different people, different characters. Everyone is strong. So anyone has taught me so many things, including uh, speaking uh, in a very diplomatic manner and so forth. Uh, in general, uh, anyone has been uh, a really big help to me. And it has opened lots of doors. And as, as an EA, uh, executive administrative officer of Tanzania as of uh, August, I started this position in August. I have been helping to reach out lots of different delegates from Tanzania. And what really excites me most is my plans for December, where I am going, I might be part of this uh, UNAT, uh, Youth of United Nations Tanzania uh, team, where I would go to three different regions of Tanzania. We could speak about MUN. We teach different people about MUN, those who have never done MUN before. And seeing as there, some of uh, the students are not being able to travel a lot, we could I could uh, tell them about ONUN. I could bring a lot of people, and I'm really hoping to do a lot of uh, reach out in my country, which is really exciting because I like teaching. I don't want to be a teacher, but I love teaching. Right? Um, I think that's basically it. But ONUN is is really exciting. I, I'm even shaking right now. Do you think he's talking about ONUN? Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, thank you, Ms. Martin. I can hand over back the speaker. Ah, uh, that's great, Elizabeth. That is that's fantastic. Um, and again, here here's an example of someone who uh, has been able to connect with a group of people to actually go out face to face. So again, it's where the technology enables.
enables um, not just more technology, but enables things face-to-face, -face, kind of like what I'm hoping that our girls' network will do, where uh, students can come and learn skills and get, get the support of their community. And, you know, we, we tell there was a girl in, in North Dakota who just started an MUN club, and she's like, guys, should I do it? What should I do? There were kids from all over the world telling her what to do, try this, try that. And then when she had success stories, she had the world cheering for her, you know, and we would say, hey, don't worry, we have your back, you know, if you, if you hit a rough point, we'll give you some ideas on what to do next. So um, th this is tremendously positive and, and validating um, and giving kids a sense that they have something to offer other people. And I tell students this all the time who are involved in MUN, uh, the best debaters are the ones that have never heard of Model United Nations. They've never had this opportunity. And uh, so far from MUN being just uh, a great academic experience and not to take away from that, but this really is uh, an opportunity for students who have developed some very, very good skills to go out and be able to share that with others. One other thing I will quickly share is that we are launching a program in March with the assistance of Qatar Academy in Doha, uh, we're going to be launching an Arabic version of this program as well, so that we're going to be doing, uh, over the next year or two, uh, a kind of a parallel program done in Arabic. And we also have the beginnings of a French program being run by a couple of students in Turkey, of all places, and the idea is to slowly build up that network so we can connect with French-speaking students in Francophone uh, West Africa, Francophone countries. So uh, the sky really, really is the limit, thanks. Thanks to our Blackboard license and uh, a lot of enthusiastic students. Um, this kind of wraps up the, the end of some of our, our stories. Uh, you know, when we left the QLC, as I've shared with many people, um, you know, we all arrived as friends and collaborators and kind of business partners in a way. Some of us had been working together two, almost three years. And when we left, we left literally as family. So much so that I got an email <laughs> from the guy who worked at the Moven Pick Hotel, who was there the night many of us checked out. And he had, he dug up my email address and emailed me. And he said, I really don't know who your students are. I know you were here for the, the leadership conference, he said, but it was so obvious that you had an incredible bond. He said, I've just been thinking about this all day. It's made my day, and um, I just wanted to let you know that whatever you've done is, is magic and you need to bottle it. So um, I think our challenge, um, you know, as global educators is to find ways to really create something authentic for students. I feel lucky that I fell into this. This is one of, you know, a million projects that we as educators can, you know, can build. But I guess what I have learned is that if you really want them to be authentic and you really want them to be meaningful, they really have to be driven by students themselves. And the students have to have a lot of ownership in terms of what they're developing um, and what they want to get out of it. Um, my how-to, for those of you that are teachers or wondering, you know, how do we get involved, um, it's, it's pretty simple. It's simple and it's not simple. You know, OMUN is like a moving train, so when you first step onto it, there are a couple pieces of the puzzle that take a little bit of getting used to, but uh, it's a very, very friendly community. Uh, what I would recommend uh, first off is to register on our website, whether you're a, a teacher or a delegate. Um, we have gone through three websites in two years because we simply keep out growing them. So we have a nice, powerful website now, almost too powerful. Um, it's kind of like me driving a Ferrari, which is which is dangerous. Um, and we're still learning all the uh, the different things that it will allow us to do. Uh, but if you are registered on our webpage, we are now beginning to send out um, monthly debate schedules via our webpage. So it's important that we have your contact information that way. Um, and if you're a student, very much we would encourage you to join one of our Facebook groups. And I think here I'm going to put one of my last slides here. Yes, find us on, on Facebook. Uh, our delegates group is over a thousand students. We have regional groups as well. And then our main public Facebook page, I would encourage all of you to join. We update that sometimes as often as six and seven times a day. I mean, there's really that much going on. So uh, if you like us and find us on Facebook, uh, you can 
keep up to date that way. Uh, I also have a LinkedIn presence and we're also on Tumblr. So I think if you just Google Online Model United Nations, you will find something. Send a message to any one of us and if you want us to do an online orientation for your school, we can do that. If you want us to walk you through step by step via email, we can do that. If you want to set up a Skype call and just ask a bunch of questions, we can do that as well. So um, everyone comes to this at a different level of um, you know, comfort and convenience and internet bandwidth. So whatever works for you, we're here to make it happen. And I think as you can tell from a few of the individuals you've heard from tonight, uh, this is a program that they love and they want to be able to share it with you. Uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, I'm just going to open it up right now. And uh, if you'd like to jump on the mic or type in anything in chat, um, and Carrie Elizabeth, Omar, Salam, if there's anything you'd like to finish up with, please feel free to jump on the mic.